More recently, we've become interested in sleep in Newcastle because of a collaboration with colleagues at the University of Northumbria. My colleague, Professor Jason Ellis, is an expert in sleep medicine. So we've begun to do some um, studies looking at the quality of sleep and the experience of sleep that patients with ME will have. We have a PhD student, Zoe, who's been doing some interviews with patients with ME and she subsequently looked at some data from a clinic in Holland um, to look at um, sleep quality measured by something called polysomnography. She's analysed um, a large number of sleep diaries from patients coming to the clinic here in the UK and more recently has begun to do some polysomnography in patients with ME. In terms of results that we have to date, we've recently published a study using the data from the Dutch cohort where we've been able to show that there are four different types of sleep abnormality in patients with ME. Essentially, what that's been able to show us is that there are patients who suffer from a type of insomnia and some patients that suffer from hypersomnia. So not sleeping enough and some patients who sleep a lot. So these four different types of sleep abnormality or phenotype are potentially amenable to specific treatments. In terms of managing the different sleep phenotypes that we've identified in patients with ME, there's still work to be done to try and understand these different types and what the best treatments might be. But sleep experts tell us that there may be treatments available that we can apply to patients with ME. At the moment, we're putting together a grant application that would look specifically at treatments targeted at the insomnia in patients with ME. What bodily functions are involved in uh, sleep disorders in ME is um, an interesting question. And what we often find is um, that there is a relationship between autonomic function and sleep. We know that blood pressure has a circadian rhythm or a, a biological rhythm throughout 24 hours and is at its lowest during sleep. So it may be that there is a strong relationship between sleep function and autonomic dysfunction and perhaps the two influence each other. In terms of managing sleepiness or sleeplessness in patients with ME, in the clinic we describe something called sleep hygiene, where we try and encourage people um, to think very closely about their sleep pattern, encourage them to um, have regular bedtimes and wake times, and to avoid napping, um, particularly during the day. Anything beyond that, we continue to investigate as a research tool and at the moment are writing a grant where we hope to look at more specific sleep interventions in patients with ME. Patients with ME and fatigue associated chronic diseases will often describe to me in clinic um, extreme sweating through the night. That's very common. We think um, it's related to problems of the autonomic nervous system, and um, particularly as the autonomic nervous system is involved in sweating. And things like your blood pressure are at their lowest through the night. So there clearly is a circadian rhythm of blood pressure and your autonomic nervous system. And in some way, we think this is related to sleep and sleep quality. Sometimes um, when people describe problems with sweating that are very symptomatic and profound, um, we've used evidence from a recent trial of s um in perimenopausal women um, and with some benefit. 
Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube of tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging of mail naar WVP het ME liggendstreepje CVS Vereniging.nl. Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chatsessies.